Lads, welcome back to Fusion YGO. It is your boy Christian the Haver Card Man back at you with the second episode for Orcus Month. We are back at you with some scrap Orcus to give you guys a combo tutorial and a quick update to the deck because the guys or the version that you guys saw was a little bit outdated. It was what I took the locals last time. Just a couple of the hand traps changed up a little bit, just be more format dependent. But other than that, play whatever non-engine stuff you feel in the main. The engine ratios are like kind of the most important part. Um, as well, the only other thing that changed really is that we were able to get our copy of Jet Synchron into the deck. That was the biggest part, having the Synchron and the Rosenix. Very huge for this deck, allowing you to brick a lot less. So that being said, we'll go ahead and jump into the combos very quickly here. All right, so the basic one card combo involving the scraps is just basically revolving around Recycler. All you need to do is get him into your hand, which can be done through either Scrap Raptor or Scrapyard to then search Scrap Raptor, which then searches your Recycler. Basically, your end goal is just get Recycler in hand and you're good to go. So all you need is this guy. Start off with your normal summon here, go and use his effect which will then let you send from the deck depending on your hand there's a couple of different scenarios for this and i'm going to kind of walk you guys through like the different steps and scenarios within this combo to kind of get a little bit more of a, an idea and understanding of this deck so if you have something like uh world legacy world wand in your hand or if you have uh say for example mocking a ruin force in your hand your best option at that point is going to be to send the Machina Fortress so that way you can get a free extender without having to banish stuff from your graveyard. You get the Machina Fortress set up and then if it's a World Wand you get that set up so you don't need to worry about it later or you get Ruin Force set up for extra extension. The other option when you have a World Wand in hand as well is you can send the other copy of World Wand to be able to special the one out from your hand. It just kind of depends on what else you have available for you. Uh, whichever you feel is going to better suit your needs. Sometimes I do like going World 1 for World 1. Sometimes I like keeping it in the deck for follow-up. It just all kind of depends. Um, as well, if you have, like, say, if you have Scrap Golem in hand, at that point, it's going to be better to go with Jet Synchron. Or if you have machines in your hand who don't equal level 8 or more combined, like, say, if you open up a Gear Su or you open up an Orcus Nightmare or Symbol Skeleton, you can instead go for the Jet Synchron to be able to free those bricks out of your hand and still be able to combo off. So for the sake of this combo, we're just going to assume that we have nothing else in hand. It's just a bunch of non-engine stuff. So we are going to, in this case, just send the Crusher on Rosenix because it is a guaranteed extender. Oops, I meant to send that to the graveyard. That was a misclick. So now you just go ahead and banish your Crystal Rosenex from the graveyard using its effect to summon a token, doesn't matter where, because you're just going to go ahead and link these two off right away for your Scrap Wyvern. Now, this is another point in the combo where this deck gets some variants. If you have a Speller Trap in your hand that is doing nothing, like say, for example, you open a Scrap Recycler in a Scrap Yard, instead of using that Scrap Yard to go and search for the Raptor to get you another Recycler, just go ahead and use the Recycler like normal and set your Scrap Yard here because on resolution of Wyvern's second effect, it needs to destroy a card on the field. It is a mandatory effect. And if there's no cards in your opponent's field, well, you got to blow up some of your stuff. So if you can blow up just a useless spell or trap card instead of having to blow up your wyvern, that much better. But once again, for this case, we assume we have nothing. So we're going to go ahead and use scrap wyvern's effect, which will summon back the recycler from the graveyard here. And then just immediately pop it again to proc the wyvern's second effect to special summon from the deck, which in this case, we'll just go ahead and get our scrap golem. And then unfortunately, we have to pop our scrap wyvern. Once again, if you have that back row, you can pop your back row instead and you're good to go now the other situation here is if you're in a case where you open up scrap golem this is why we play the uh jet synchron you would send the jet synchron from your deck to the graveyard to discard the golem out of your hand and you would basically do this combo but instead of reviving recycler from your graveyard you just revive golem and pop wyvern and you get the same thing so a little bit of a little bit of a tip there for you guys I actually had somebody point that out to me and it was something apparently it never dawned on me before i guess or i just didn't want to do because i hate sacrificing the wyvern but once again that's another case where if you have another back row that's just dead you can still revive the golem pop the back row instead you don't have to worry about anything so uh in this case now we're just going to go ahead and declare our golems effect again to summon the recycler back once again assuming that we don't have world wand in hand or any access to it right away we're just going to go ahead and now send it to the graveyard because this is a crucial part of our combo. This is a this is basically the bridge between your Orcus and your scrap combo. This is like the biggest part of it that makes everything click because now you have a world legacy monster in graveyard. So you can link these two off to be able to go into Lib the World Key Blade Master. 
So now you're allowed to use her effect to be able to search your deck and set a World Legacy Succession. Which then, of course, we're just going to flip up and activate right away to Special Summon back the Scrap Golem here. And from there, we're going to use the Scrap Golem to summon back the Recycler, activating his effect once more to now finally get the Orcus stuff online. We are going to send the Orcus Nightmare to the graveyard. Once again, targets here depend on what's available in your hand and what type of tools you have access to. If you have extra of these high level machines in your hand, you're going to want to send Fortress and try to discard as many of them as you can to get your graveyard set up up and rolling. But once again, this is just assuming you only have the one card combo and you just have a bunch of non engine stuff. Okay, so now this is the point in the combo where things really deviate. If you wanted to, you could just completely end here by linking these three off for Napolosa, and then you have Orcus follow up for next turn, but it doesn't really do a whole lot. I mean, unless you have really good non-engine paired up with it. Uh, but at this point, what you're going to want to do is actually just leave all this stuff on board as bonus extenders. If you had one more monster to work with, you could actually get full Orcus combo on top of making this into an Apollosa. But since we're not in that situation, we kind of just have to play with what we got. A lot of this really does assume on having an extender so, or an easy way to dump one of these guys from your hand rather than having to do it from your deck. But in this case, it's completely fine. So we're just going to go ahead and banish the Orcus Nightmare targeting any one of these. It really doesn't matter. Probably just Lib because it's whatever uh, to be able to send a, an Orcus Symbol Skeleton from our deck to Grave here. And then now, of course, we can go ahead and banish that World Wand to bring back our Nightmare. And don't forget, at this point in time, once you activated the Nightmare to begin with, you are locked into Dark Monsters. But at this point in the combo, you don't really care too much. So now what we're going to do here is we're going to link off the Nightmare and the Golem. To be able to go into our Galatea, I only did it here just to make sure that these guys are linked. So uh, Galatea gets her bonus. It's not the biggest thing ever, but not being able to be destroyed by battle is helpful in some scenarios. Uh, so now, of course, in this case, what I actually like to do here, since we are playing the two world wand in the deck, I'm going to use Galatea's effect to actually put our Christron Rosenix back for a follow up turn in case it is needed. And then we will. This is probably where the combo deviates the most. If you want to go for the IP line with uh, Dingirsu, you most certainly can. If you know what you're playing against and just being able to set up a crescendo is better, you can go for that as well. Um, I think in this case, just to be play or just to play it safe because Dingirsu offers either protection or a way to disrupt further. I am going to go for the Babel because this also allows me to get some resources set up on my opponent's turn. So we're going to go ahead. I don't know why it does it like that, but it's fine. I, I probably just missed the button. So we're going to get our Babel uh, set to the field. And we're just going to activate it right away. And then now we're actually going to go ahead and overlay this Galatea into a Nagirsu. This is one of those decision making points that you can make as well. Uh, if you didn't want to send the Rosenix back to the deck, you also could have saved it to be able to tuck under this Dingirsu to have for the next turn as well. It's totally up to you on how you want to play it. And if you open up mul multiple recyclers and you just want to guarantee that you have a good target to send next turn, you can send the Rosenix back uh, or you can. I, I, in this case, I like the World Wand because I don't need to rely on actually getting it uh, dumped from recycler. I just know that I have an easy way to get it back into the graveyard as follow up for next turn because then I can uh, banish my nightmare and my symbol skeleton later on to be able to get extra fodder to be able to summon back with world one creating that infinite resource loop so i think the christian rosenix is ultimately better but it's all up to you and how you're playing and what situations you're facing so now that you have all this established of course you're going first you're not going to use the ding gears who's sending effect uh, if you're going second you can definitely choose whether or not you want to use that to be able to clear up some space against your opponent uh, i'll show a going second combo as well with this so you guys can kind of see how you break boards and deal with certain stuff but now at this point you're going to want to go ahead and link both of these off to get your IP Mascarena. So this actually does a lot of things for you here. This gives you a Dingirsu setup in the graveyard with a symbol skeleton for an instant disruption. That way you have resource follow up with your Orcus Nightmare and your World Wand be able to give you more resources online and be able to put you through your resource loops. Uh, you have an IP which can tag out with the lib to go into either a Nightmare Unicorn or if you do it before you start shotgunning the Orcus stuff, you can go into an Apollosa. Either way, you're going to get a spin out of lib and a monster that's going to be protected by card effects with IP. Um, if you go into the Unicorn, you get a second spin. If you go into the Apollosa, you get two monster negates. So it just kind of depends on your situation, which one you think will be better. If it's earlier on in the turn, usually Apollosa is going to be a bit more solid, but Unicorn can definitely come up once they start getting their board established and you want to break 
break it before they go too far. Um, and of course, once you start going to the Orca stuff, there's tons of other things you can go into. If you have the Banish set up for it, you can go into a Long Gear suit for an extra disruption. You can go for an Orcustrian if you just want a tank to be able to make sure you stay alive. You have a ton of different options here, but basically you end up with several disruptions on this board that also allow you to get resources again on the next turn, which is very, very helpful. Um, like I said, everything's just set up here. And of course, we're just assuming we have like four non-engine or multiple copies of starters in our opening hand. So let's go ahead and take a look at that uh, same type, type of situation going second. So you know how to break a board. And then we will also look at a one and a half to two card combo. All right, so once again, assuming going second with only the one starter, or at least only one starter that we can actually use because most of them are normal summons. Uh, in this case, you're looking to break a board, so things are gonna end up looking a little bit different by the end of this, but that is a-okay. So we're gonna assume that we have stuff that we, uh, we've sided in. We're looking at like dark rulers and things like that. Of course, if you're using dark ruler, you're not gonna end the game that turn, but you can at least establish stuff that makes it hard for your opponent to deal with it or just be able to break their board and be able to survive. Or you can assume under the situation that you're not actually under something like Dark Ruler no more, you're just able to play through the board. So we'll go ahead and normal summon our Scarper Cycler here. Once again, uses effect. Same situation uh, with the Sends. Just depends on what you have in your hand, but the oh, the catch-all is your Rosenex because you don't need anything in hand for that to go off. All right, go ahead and banish this really quick. Get our token. I'm not even going to bother summoning it because we're just going to link it off right away go into the wyvern and now this is the nice part since you're going second you don't need to worry about sending any of your own cards because you can pop any card on the field on resolution of this effect so we're going to declare the wyvern be able to summon back the recycler pop it right away Oop, pop it right away you don't get to use its effect uh declare the wyvern's second effect now that a scrap monster was destroyed to be able to summon the golem from deck and then now you get a pop a token on your opponent's field so say they had a card right here boom it's gone and now we can go ahead and use our golem to summon the recycler once again just going through most of the same lines here it's just where you go through it that ends up being a lot different and this will also showcase you how oops that's not what i meant to click this will also showcase you how different the combos can be if you're able to keep wyvern on field it does help you significantly so now we have our world wand so we can go ahead and link these two away here to be able to go into our live the world key blade master again using its effect once more to set that world legacy succession now ironically in this case i actually recommend before you activate the world legacy succession starting to break the board by linking these two off for an access code talker being able to target either one of these it doesn't matter but what you're going to do is you're going to chain link one lib and then chain link two access codes so that way your opponent can't respond you get a 4300 access code talker and then a non-targeting shuffle on lib that can't be responded to thanks to access code so now you get to remove one of their cards from their field again so that's already two cards you've taken care of access code also has two different attributes that it can banish from graveyard to get rid of two more cards that your opponent can't respond to so now you've dealt with four cards in their board by that point in time that should be a substantial amount of their stuff but if they're not quite done yet you can keep playing you can flip that world legacy succession now be able to summon back the scrap golem use his effect to summon the recycler once more and use his effect one more time to be able to send the nightmare unicorn now at this point it does actually kind of or orcus nightmare i don't know why i said nightmare unicorn at this point it does actually matter your target with orcus nightmare if you're trying to go for game this turn so we're going to assume they have no monsters left at this point we're going to orcus nightmare banishing targeting our access code talker and now you actually have a couple different options here uh so of course you can go with the normal stuff trying to go into your um symbol skeleton plays you can try to go for actually i think that probably is not the best option at this point what we are going to do actually is we are going to send machina ruin for so this does a couple things this gives our access code a thousand extra attack because he's level 10 and it will actually set us up with a way to quickly and easily end this game without having to fuss about it so now we're going to go ahead and banish the world wand here targeting the Orcus Nightmare to special summon it back to the field. Now, due to our link arrows, unfortunately, we do have to link off the Golem with the Nightmare. So we can go into the Galatea here, be able to use its effect. Doesn't really matter too much. We're just going to put the Rosenix back. That is actually the correct choice in this scenario. Your best bet, once again, is probably going to be the or Orchestrated Babel, in all likelihood. So get that taken care of, and then you are going to directly overlay the Galatea. 
once again assuming that your opponent's board is basically broken at this point you don't really need to worry too much about using his sending effect at this point you can use his attaching effect which you really want to do because you're going to want to attach to this world legacy world one once again you are dark locked at this point but that's not going to matter in just a moment so now we're going to go ahead and link two here uh i guess basically it has to be ips reina that's perfectly fine you can go do another galatea if you want since you do have orchestrated babble online you could do a galatea actually that might be the smarter move just in case we're not able to push for lethal for whatever reason um but now you get your machine levels in graveyard which is the big part of this here so you're gonna banish your orcus nightmare and your world wand to be able to summon out your machina ruin force from the graveyard so now you have a 5300 attack access code talker a 4600 machina ruin force that has a battle face and a gate that has yours and your opponent's life points and an 1800 galatea that can be destroyed by battle so basically what you have here is you have ways to keep your stuff remotely online uh you can galatea to be able to set like you can either set the um orchestrated crescendo on your opponent's turn or you can try to go for um the draw spell totally have to, you can go for orchestra return or crescendo on your opponent's turn of course neither one's going to be live right away but if they get rid of your crescendo you can banish it from graveyard to search a gear suit and still get your orchid stuff online or you can even go for you know there, there's tons of different things you can go here if you're not able to get lethal in this position but that's over 10,000 damage that should be more than enough especially if they try to do something funny in the battle phase and they just don't read ruin force that's always a good time so that's kind of how you break boards a little bit and clear yourself open for otk of course it all depends on the situation and how you're able to play around things so let's go ahead and reset this now and get a one and a half two card combo okay so this is a perfect example of a two card combo i'm going to show the scrap raptor off this time because i've just been going straight to recycler and then you just want something like rolled wand something you're going to want to get in your graveyard once again that can be christian rosenix that could be either of your world wands that can be a mocking a ruin force orcus nightmare there's so many different cards that would not matter to get in your graveyard that this actually will help extend your play so much. And World 1 is the perfect one because it's also a target that you usually send off of Recycler. So this saves you that step and gives you an extra extender. So we're going to go ahead and normal summon our Raptor, use its effects, go ahead and search for our Recycler. I'm just going to kind of speed through stuff here. Uh, so we're just going to normal summon out the Recycler with our extra summon. In this case, uh, I think just having the second world wand set up is actually really nice because it guarantees that we'll have a follow up later. So we'll send that. We'll use world wands effect to be able to special summon the other one out from hand. Link these two off to be able to go into our scrap wyvern using its effect. Summon the recycler, pop recycler, summon golem from deck. And then unfortunately pop our wyvern because in this case we don't have a back row. If you wanted to assume you had a back row in this case, having that second wyvern, you guys can kind of see what that does on the last combo. Um, so now we'll go ahead and use the golem. Revive back recycler once again. And like I said, this just allows us to basically skip steps because we didn't have to send the Rosenix. We didn't have to, uh, I guess we did have to send the world one, but we have a bonus one for later. Uh, so now we actually get to send our Orcus nightmare a little bit early now we can link these two off uh and fenrir does also work for this combo as well you just special fenrir first and that's your extender just in case anyone was curious so now we'll go ahead and summon out lib use libs effect set world legacy succession activate it right away be able to get that golem back and summon out recycler with golem be able to use his effect to dump again since you have the extra dump at this point in time considerably speaking you actually have a couple of different options here now i'm going to send the orca symbol skeleton but i will explain here in just a second why i'm going for this specifically once again we already have the nightmare and the world wand set up so now we're actually going to be able to in this scenario specifically be able to link these off to go into our Appalosa, insulating our combos and giving us more disruption so that'll be a three mat Appalosa. nothing too crazy but it does kind of put the opponent on a little bit of a downhill or of an uphill battle so now in this case what we're allowed to do is we can banish our orcus nightmare once again targeting Appalosa here to be able to send i mean you can do a couple of different things at this point in time uh you can send the ruin force if you really want to but actually our best case scenario is going to be sending the gears to the orcus mech knight because now what we can do from here is banish our orcus symbol skeleton special summon the gears to and then activate gears effect to dump another from the deck now the sad part is is we kind of don't have any other orcus monsters to send here we are a little bit limited 
But in this case, you do have a couple different options because whatever you don't want to search off of Galatea or whatever you don't care to search, you can send to the graveyard instead because Babel on a following turn can add itself back. Uh, and Crescendo on a following turn can search you another monster. So if you wanted to, you actually could send the Orcus Crescendo because during your opponent's turn, that's a way to get another gear suit into your hand to guarantee you have follow-up. The biggest thing was really just getting the extra Orcus name on board. So then now we can go ahead and banish our World Wand here to summon back our Orcus Nightmare. Be able to link these two off to make our Galatea. And once again, since we dumped the Crescendo, we have we're just gonna go for the um Ding Girsu line here. So we're gonna declare the Galatea, be able to shuffle back the world wand because we don't really care about that right now. So we will go ahead and activate our orchestrated babble. Um, now with that being done, we are able to overlay into our Ding Girsu. Now, this unfortunately does not actually get us enough to be able to make it to the IP line, but this does offer us protection for quite a bit. Uh, this is two destruction protections from battle or card effects, which will then also set us up with our resource loop to be able to summon the gear suit back. And then we can reattach the symbol skeleton just to make sure that stays online. We have an Orcus Nightmare to help us stay alive. Uh, also being able to banish itself to send a Machina Rune Force from the deck. We'll give Apollosa another thousand attack, which equals another negate and another chance at survival. Uh, there's of course a ton of different ways you could have played this hand out Instead of going to the Apollosa, you could have kept all your extra bodies on field as pure extenders to go into the IP lib line if you so chose and just be able to do a lot of crazy shenanigans from there. So I'm not going to show off the Orcus combos just because a lot of people know those. They're pretty cut and dry. It's normal gear, so you make tokens, you know, it, all, all the standard stuff. There's nothing really special about the gear suit lines. It's when the scraps come in that your combos actually really go off. Don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with the gear suit lines. They help you hold the line until you see your scrap stuff. So there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But lads. That is all I got for you today on today's comp tutorial. I went a little more in depth with this one because I feel like with my previous ones, I kind of skipped over stuff and just went straight through things, assuming everyone knew what was going on. But just to make sure that everyone is very clear on things, I decided to go a little more in deep with this one. So that's all I got for you guys today for today's episode of Orcus Month. If you guys enjoyed, be sure to like and subscribe and also let us know down in the comments what else you would like to see in upcoming Orcus Months. We already have this one kind of planned out. But if there's anything you'd like to see, maybe we can throw in something bonus as well. So anyways, guys, that's all I got for you today. As always, good fun. Have luck. Peace out.